Hey, welcome back to JG3 Reviews. My name is James, and here we explore the world of fountain pens, ink, and paper. And today, we are spinning the globe all the way around to South London, where And Hand has introduced a new fountain pen called the And Hand Method. And if you're not familiar with And Hand, they are a desk and pen and writing accessories company with an emphasis on modern and minimalist design. And apparently, they're good at it. They've won three Red Dot Awards, their ballpark version of this pen won Writing Instrument of the Year from Stationary Matters, and this new fountain pen version, I think, is going to do them just as well. This is really quite a neat pen. Now, full disclosure, they did send this pen to me for review, but in this video, I will share with you what I like, what I don't like, and how the pen writes. So, let's spin that camera and take a closer look. So let's start then with the design of the pen, and we'll start, of course, at the top of the cap. First, we have this brass finial, which you notice has a slot in it that can be used to open up the cap, and you can clean out that cap if you have an ink problem or something like that. And you can get the plastic sleeve out of there very easily. Handy that that is there, and nice that it's machined in a way that it actually it looks good while being functional. It is an octagonal faceted cap and this carries over that design language from the method ballpoint pen which came first and I think that looks good. Now it is of course narrower on the flat sides so these don't function as a roll stop and there's not a clip or a roll stop on the pen so you know you might want to use something like a third party roll stop or they do make roll stops for their pens. The body of this particular pen is anodized aluminum. It's also available in brass and stainless steel. All the machining and the materials here seem quite good. For example, look at how well the chamfered edge at the top is interplaying with those faceted sides. All done quite well and put together well. You see again at the bottom of the barrel that it is nice and crisply done here as well. And then you'll also notice that there is a tiny chamfer there at the barrel and the cap where they come together just short of meeting up, allowing that brass to shine through that looks quite good. But you notice how clean and even that is. And the only adornment on the pen is the brand name and hand, and that too is just done nicely and simply. So the overall language on the outside of the pen is a modern, sleek look and uh, feels good in the hand. The weight is really balanced. If I take the cap off, for example, and balance it on my finger, you notice that that is just left of center and very well balanced, and that is with the pen inked. Well, it does, by the way, post. It's not very deep in its posting, but it still doesn't make for an overly long pen, and it's still quite well balanced. If you don't want to post, for most hands, it's still going to be long enough unless you're a high gripper and large hand at the same time, and then you might run out of pen eventually. But I found this pen comfortable to write with. Now that nib is a steel number no. five Schmidt nib. It is gold plated, and this, of course, is a medium. You can tell because among the scrolling and the label is that big M, and I appreciate that that is on the nib. I tell you, it drives me nuts when nib makers don't even include the sizing or hide it so well that you need a microscope to find it. So thank you, Schmidt, for what you did here. This is a really nicely tuned nib, by the way. You'll see that in the writing test. Very smooth, nice and wet, good nib. I appreciate that. You have their standard plastic feed, and it is available in other sizes as well as you can see in the specifications in this video. Now, if we take off the barrel, what will we find? We will find an included converter. This one filled with Waterman Serenity Blue. The converter too is Schmidt and that works as it should. It will take both long or short international cartridges as well if you're just not that into bottle inks. As I mentioned, you can see there is a plastic liner. I've had zero issues with dry out whatsoever. All right. First in our size comparison is the Scrivener EDC, and I've chosen this pen because it also is an anodized pen, so a similar finish and feel in that way. Of course, this does have a great big clip, maybe too big and chunky for the design overall, but functions well. It also shares that Schmidt nib, and so it writes quite similarly 
as well, but a very different design and approach. Next, I had the Lamy All-Star in petrol blue, very familiar pin. And then finally, we have another entry from the North Atlantic, literally an entry. This is the Gravitas entry. And I included it because they're very similar in price. They're both minimalist pins. They're both anodized, but very different designs, different nibs, but I could see somebody cross shopping these two pins. And here we have their pins and their unposted length. And then in posted length, it actually comes in second to the long Lamy All-Star. And uh, then that Gravitas really posts deeply, so it's not really even as long as the And Hand, and not that much longer than the Scrivener EDC. All right. Time to put it to paper. Again, this is a medium nib. It is steel, it's gold plated, and it's a number five. And that's a Schmidt. Ink today is Waterman Serenity Blue. Flow is really good on this pen. I think the wetness is good for a number five. It's a stiff nib, but I think you can get just a little bit of line variation if you slow down and you try. This nib is really nice and smooth. It's well tuned. I like it. Reverse writing. I forget this most of the time. And there's a little bit of a, let me see. Yeah, really sharp pencil, a little bit, little bit scratchy, but not horrible. If you needed to do an extra, extra fine note just real fast, but you know, yeah, you can tell it's not tuned for that, but you could get by if you really had to. Now, how about we do our speed test? All right, I lift it here. I don't... Try that again. Oop, I turned there. Yeah, I think that keeps up just fine. Uh, I, I did a couple of things there, but yeah pin performed really well. It does keep up. Again, I've had zero issues with dry out. I think that's both the quality of the pin and, let's be honest, Waterman Serenity Blue is a pretty reliable workhorse ink, and you just don't have that many problems unless it is a problem pin. All right, so let's talk pros and cons. Uh, pros, I think that they have done a really good job with their first fountain pen. I do like the simplicity of the design. The snap cap works really well. Uh, con, of course, is gonna be true to any pen without any sort of a, a roll stopper clip, and I understand design-wise why some people choose not to have them, but you know, you're just gonna have to take extra care if your writing surface doesn't happen to be nice and square, plum and level. The nib on this one, Schmidt, you know, they chose that for a reason, they're good nibs, and I, I think I've actually found that all the pens I've had lately that were Schmidt number no. 5 nibs have been improved from what my first experience or two was. And so uh, I don't know if that is the pen makers tuning them and making sure before they go out the door or if Schmidt has upped their game a little bit, refined some things. I don't know, but I have, I have had really good luck with their nibs 
here lately. I think a personal pro, and, and this is going to be one of those things that's a bit personal, is I think the feel in hand and I think the balance of the pen and just the ergonomics of it, they work for me. I know that that metal section and especially the way it tapers down, that's going to be quite a personal thing as to whether or not you like that. But I found that I do, and because of the length of it, I'm able to hold it up higher, and that's just kind of, for me, that's the sweet spot. And I like a pen that has a section that kind of gives you some room to find your find your little spot there, and I like that. Uh, machining, again, done quite nicely. It does come with a converter. Now, I didn't mention earlier, but the packaging is also minimal. Uh, very simple, biodegradable packaging. I like the design of it. Shows you what's inside, and so you know exactly what you're getting. Now, while there is a converter included, there aren't any ink cartridges or anything like that. Uh, to me, that is not a con. To some of you, especially if you're a brand new user, maybe the fact that there's not a cartridge including the pen would be a little bit of a, a downer for you when you open the pen. But uh, for me, you know, lots of cartridges, lots of ink bottles. Uh, not a deal. That's just not a problem for me whatsoever because a lot of times, honestly, I will use maybe the first cartridge that comes with a pen if I've never used that brand of pen before just to see if the ink they included performs better or worse than what I might have put in it. I will do that sometimes or if it's a pen company that likes to void the warranty if you don't use their ink. Those are out there. Read the fine print if that matters to you. But in this case, the fact they included a converter was awesome. Cleaned that pen, grabbed that bottle, and got to writing, and it has performed just as it should. I think price for some is going to be either a pro or a con because I think they kind of hit in what is the middle of the market. Uh, there are pens very similar in construction quality and writing experience that are above this pen in price and that are below this pen in price. So uh, I'm going to say they've kind of hit the hit the middle of the market and maybe that's a Goldilocks thing for them or for you or maybe it's not but that is uh, where it is. So bottom line I, I do think it's a pen that's worth considering. I think they've done a good job with this pen, and, and, and I like it. I like the pen. It writes really nicely and does so with a pretty sleek, modern style. Share with me what you think in the comments. I'm always glad to hear it. If you got more questions, ask. Be sure and hit that bell so you know when the next review comes out. I got several good things coming up, including end of the year best and worst lists and all that good stuff. Thank you for watching. And as always, God bless you, and have a great week.